Hello, my name is Matt Connor from Network Inside, and welcome to my technical tutorial on DMVPN. So DMVPN is a routing technique that allows you to bring up spoke sites dynamically into what's known as a DMVPN cloud, and has a number of phases that will influence its design. So in this tutorial, we will start with the first network topology, which was a hub and spoke design, and we'll do a good recap of DMVPN phase one. This really was a starting point of the DMVPN design phases. However, today you're probably going to see DMVPN phase three, which allows for spoke to spoke tunnels, which may be better suited for you if you don't need a true hub and spoke. So in this demo, there's also gonna be a bit of troubleshooting. So after the demo, you're gonna have a good understanding of DMVPN phase one and DMVPN phase three. All of the DMVPN phases use the same protocols, but just in a different way. So DMVPN phase one really is the simplest phase to implement, as long as the hub has enough resources to service all the spokes, the network will perform well. Phase one also allows for the complete reduction of routing information by sending a default route to the spokes or a summary route. This way, spoke routing tables can be kept really efficient, and we'll have a look at this in just a moment. However, phase one optimizes the routing tables of spokes at the cost of routing efficiency between spokes. Then we have DMVPN phase two and phase three that introduce the concept of spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnels. Now let's look at this on the CLI. Let us have a look at the topology we have. So we have a single hub and two spokes. R11 is the hub and then we have R31 and R41 as the spoke sites. So let's do a quick recap on the IP ranges with a show IP in brief on the hub. So we have the 172.16. Now this is the transport subnets and this represents the underlay network. So the purpose of the underlay is to provide connectivity so the overlay can operate above it. Now the overlay being DMVPN. So we have the 192.168.100 subnet and this is the tunnel IP address. So with R11 and R31 and R41, the tunnel subnets are considered the DMVPN cloud. Then we have LAN subnets that are hanging off each router. Now let us have a look at the overlay, which is the DMVPN cloud. Now here we have EIGRP adjacencies over the GRE tunnel. So the purpose of the routing protocol, which is EIGRP, is to advertise the LAN subnets that were hanging off each router. So as we already mentioned, DMVPN phase one is the simplest to implement, but as long as the hub has enough resources to service the spokes. So with DMVPN phase one, all spoke to spoke traffic has to go through the hub, regardless if the spoke to spoke path are closer in terms of proximity. Now let's have a look at the DMVPN side of things. You can see that R11 is the hub and we have two registered spokes. These spokes are registered dynamically by means of NHRP. Now let's jump over to the first spoke R31 and have a look at its routing table. So the routing table on the spokes looks good and we're learning the remote LAN networks that are hanging off the other spokes. Now this is the essence of DMVPN phase one as the next hop we're learning is set to the hub. So if you don't see the LAN subnets here from the other spokes, make sure you have split horizon turned off at the hub site and we'll have a look at this in just a moment. So let's have a look at the NHRP entry for the hub tunnel. So we have a tunnel interface of the hub router that is mapped to its non-broadcast multi ax address. So now we know where to send traffic. So even though the spoke is a point to point tunnel at this stage, we still have to tell it where the NHS is, which is the hub. So you may be asking, what is an NHS? Well, we don't have ethernet on this network and we can't use ARP. So we need a different way or mechanism. And this is with NHRP that works with a client server model, the hub being the server, the NHS, and the spokes being the client, the NHCs. So let's play around with split horizon on the hub router. So let me go to R11 and in the EIGRP configuration, this is where we can turn on or off split horizon and view the results. 
So when we turn on Spit Horizon, you will see the EIGRP neighbors automatically resync. So now let us go to the spoke and view the results. Now you can see we're actually missing the subnet from the other spoke. And this is normal unexpected behavior for EIGRP. So let's turn this back off again. And once we do this, we can view the results. So we go to the hub and we turn off Spit Horizon. The neighbors resync. And then we go back to the spoke R31 and we view the routing table. And now you can see that the land subnet for the other spoke is in the EIGRP routing table. So phase one also allows for a complete reduction of routing information by setting a default or summary route down to the spokes. And in large sites where you have tons of spokes, this can really improve performance. So we jump back over to the hub, which is R11, and it's here that we can enter the summary address command. So let's have a quick look at the routing table on the hub once this change has been made. And you can see we have a null route. So we have a show IP route that shows a summary point to a null interface. So everything is looking good from the perspective of the hub. So now let's jump over to a spoke and see what change this has had on the routing table. So as you can see, we now have a summary route and we don't see any of the specifics. This way, spoke routing tables can be kept really efficient. However, this efficiency comes at a price. So phase one, optimizing the routing tables of the spokes at the cost of routing efficiency between the spokes as all spoke to spoke traffic has to go through the hub. So let's do a quick ping test and we are receiving an echo reply. So DMVPN phase two and phase three introduced the concept of spoke to spoke tunnels. So let's start our journey with spoke to spoke tunnels. Now for this, I have a new topology set up, but it really is only a few commands and I could have done this on the existing topology. I mean, you should never do this on fly in a production, but for a lab environment, you can say let's upgrade DMVPN phase one to phase three pretty easily. So for the entire purpose of DMVPN phase three is to allow spoke to spoke tunnels and we don't have to traverse the hub anymore. And these tunnels, more importantly, can be created on demand. So let's have a look at the configuration, the hub. So we do a show run int on the tunnel interface and you will see we have a multipoint GRE, which we had in DMVPN phase one, but we also have a new command and this is the IP NHRP redirect. And we'll look at this in just a moment. Now let's jump over to one of the spokes and carry out the same command. You'll see now that the spoke is a multi-point GRE. Now, can you remember in DMVPN phase one, this was a point-to-point -point GRE, and we also have this multicast keyword at the end here, and this is needed for EIGRP multicast hellos. So we didn't need this command for DMVPN phase one as a tunnels, I mean the GRE tunnels and the spokes were point-to-point, -point. And there's only one way for the EIGRP multicast hellos to go, which is to the hub as it's a point to point tunnel. But now with DMVPN phase three, we have GRE in multi point mode. So we need a new multicast table that is maintained by NHRP. Actually, I actually forgot to put in one command. This command is critical for DMVPN phase three, which is the IP NHRP shortcut. So we have two new commands for DMVPN phase three. We have the IP NHRP redirect on the hub and the IP NHRP shortcut on the spokes. So let's go to the spoke and have a look at some DMVPN outputs. Well, you see, we don't have any spoke tunnels. So at this moment, we just have a static tunnel to the hub that we explicitly configured. However, we have not sent any spoke to spoke traffic. So remember that spoke to spoke tunnels are dynamic and this is the beauty about DMVPN and it saves a ton of resources on the spokes and the hubs in very large networks. So let's start and trigger some traffic and we can do this a number of ways. So I'm gonna do this with a trace route. So notice that the first packet travels across the hub and this is expected. Now let me do a second trace route and I will reissue the exact same command. As you can see, it's going to the hub, but it actually shouldn't because this is the second time we've done the command and it should be going directly to the other spoke. So let's go to the hub and do a little bit of debugging. So here we're gonna debug NHRP. 
And once we debug NHRP, let me go back to the spoke and reissue the same command. So let's go back to the hub and we'll scroll back up through the debug output. And you can see it's attempting to redirect, but there seems to be a failure. Now I have not seen this before, but I know what this target address is. And this is the next hop from the hub on the SP router. So let's go back to the spoke and do a little bit of troubleshooting. And you know what? I see where the problem is. Let's remove the source interface and issue the test again. Now, once we issue the test again without the source interface, you can see that we're going directly to the spoke, which is true DMVPN phase three. Now, let us go back to the hub because I still have the debug output running. And you can see now we have a traffic indication message which is what we expected. So comment below if you know technically what the problem was. Now let us have a look at the DMVPN tunnels. And as you can see, we have new ones. And these are the spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnels that are created dynamically when we sent spoke-to-spoke -spoke traffic.